There are two common approaches to learning object-oriented programming. One is objects first, where we learn about object-oriented design first, and the other is late objects, where we simply learn the syntax of programming first, and then after we understand the syntax, we get into objects. At this point, we're moving into objects from syntax. So this video is going to be the first part of a series where we take a look at that journey. I'm going to start by doing things the wrong way, which is putting a program into the public static void main, and then we're going to refactor it into some methods, and then after that we're going to take a look at object-oriented development, which will be a video that follows this one. First, let's start with a program. In this program, we're going to be simulating vehicles that are driving. So we want to start with a gallons of gas, a miles per gallon, and an odometer reading, and we want to see how this changes when we drive the vehicle a certain distance. So first, as I said, do it the wrong way. We'll put everything in a linear fashion in public static void main. The reason why that's the wrong way is that it's not very reusable. It, in, it assumes we're going to run the same set of instructions every single time without changing. It doesn't account for multiple trips or flexibility in the trips that we're going to take or even multiple vehicles. But for frame of reference, let's go ahead and get started. So I have a program that I started in a previous video and let's remember what I said about what we want to track for a vehicle. So I'm going to say int miles per gallon equals, we'll start this off at 20, and then we'll say double gallons of gas equals, we'll say 10. Note that that's a double, uh, so that means it can have a decimal where an int cannot have a decimal. Finally, we'll say int odometer, which is an odometer reading, and we'll start that one off at zero. Now, let's say that we want to run our vehicle, say, 100 miles. So we'll say int miles driven equals 100. Now we need to change each of our variable values. You see we have a couple simple, simple formulas I've put together. Miles driven divided by miles per gallon will give us the gallons of gas that were consumed. So we take our existing gallons of gas and we subtract from that the gallons that were consumed. That's our new gallons of gas. Also our odometer is going to increase by the number of miles driven. Now you notice in each of these we have the assignment operator. That's not equals as in equality, that's equals as in assignment. Perform the activity on the right and assign it to the variable on the left. Now there's actually a shortcut if we want to modify or operate on this variable here. Instead of saying odometer equals odometer plus miles driven, we can say odometer plus equals miles driven. And the same thing as what we had before, it simply says add miles driven to odometer. We could do the same shortcut up here. We could say gallons of gas minus equals miles driven divided by miles per gallon. So with this, let me put a system out print line before and after so we can see how these variables change. And now we'll run the program. We look at the output and we see that before we drove the car, we had odometer zero, gallons of gas 10. When we drove it again, we have odometer 100, gallons of gas 5. So we see that those computations did add, up as we, did add up as we wish. But the problem becomes, what if we want to take it on another trip? Well, then we end up doing what's considered a no-no in programming, and that is doing copy-paste. So I could say miles driven, and maybe we make this 60, and then we do, we do these computations again. But you notice that what I've done up here has been copied and pasted down below. Copy and paste is not good with source code because it bloats our code. It's not reusable. Now, why don't we like bloated code? Well, the more code we have, the more we have to maintain. I think of this like the house I used to live in that was really big, and I felt like I never finished cleaning it because it was a big house, had a lot of rooms that had to be cleaned and vacuumed, so on and so forth. Then I moved to a small apartment and realized it takes me about an hour to clean the whole apartment top to bottom. Same thing's true with source code. The more source code you have, the more it takes to maintain. The smaller footprint you have, the less you have to maintain. Let's go ahead and run this, and then let's consider a way we could make it a little bit more efficient. I run again, and you see that on our first trip, we have odometer 100 gallons of gas 5. Second trip, where we go 60 miles, we have odometer 160 gallons of gas 2. So two consecutive trips have run up the odometer and, and have run down the gallons of gas. We see that we have repeated code here, identical code 
between line 13 to 15 and also 19 to 21. And this screams to us that it's time to refactor because one of the big principles in object-oriented programming is dry or don't repeat yourself. And here we're repeating ourselves. Let's consider how we can refactor this and have this in only one place. One really easy thing to refactor is repeated code because we can put that into a method. But we also need to consider something called variable scope. So here we have three variables declared locally. Locally means they're declared within a method, which means they're only alive between the point where they're declared, where the blue highlighting starts, and the end of the method down here. So first thing we need to do is promote these variables to have higher visibility. So I'm simply going to highlight them, cut, go up towards the top of our main class, paste, and for the moment I need to add the uh, keyword static. I could also make these private. Uh, if you don't know what that means, don't worry just yet. It will make more sense when we refactor this to be an object-oriented program, and I can explain them a little bit better in that context. So nonetheless, we have our variables up top. Now, the next thing we can do is highlight uh, one of these repeated lines of code. And once again, we can use our refactor tools, right click, refactor, and let's say extract method. That's a very nice thing that we can do in IntelliJ, which is when we're within a method that's getting too big and we wanna take some logic out of that, put it into a new method, right click, refactor, extract method. We'll take the lines of code we've highlighted and we'll make a new method out of that. Uh, method should really only do one thing, and it should do one thing well. So if you find your method's doing a lot of things, that's a good time to refactor. Now it's prompting me here because it says, what do you want to call this method? And I'm going to call it drive. And we'll say replace all occurrences. And notice that our main method is now a whole lot more concise. As a matter of fact, I can clean it up even a little bit more by removing some of these empty spaces here. But you notice that we don't have that repeated code. Instead, what we're doing is we're simply calling this drive method that has what was repeated code, but it has it only one time. And we're passing in miles driven 160. As a matter of fact, we could make this even easier because we no longer need that miles driven variable. We can simply say drive 100, and then we can say drive 60. And if we run the program now, we should see the same output that we saw last time. And sure enough, you see that our odometer starts at zero with 10 gallons of gas. Then it goes to 100, five gallons of gas after it's run 100 miles at 20 miles per gallon. Then 60 more miles puts it at 160 on the odometer and two gallons of gas. So the exact same behavior we had before, uh, but this time with a lot less code. So we've taken one big method and we're starting to chop it up into different methods. But what other considerations do we have here? Well, what if we have multiple vehicles? This only accounts for one vehicle because you see, we've smashed together the concept of the data that a vehicle will own. It's odometer, miles driven, miles per gallon, or odometer. Um, and we've also put the logic in with it. So it becomes very tightly coupled. Let's say that you have a car too. Well, how are we gonna represent that? Oh my gosh, we're gonna to have to duplicate each of these variables and we're gonna to have to give them a new name because a variable can only have, uh, you can, a variable has to have a unique name. So if we're declaring a new variable, we have to call it your miles per gallon, your gallons of gas, your odometer. And you see that once again, we're getting to a point where we're starting to see some duplication. We're seeing that we've declared something here, we're declaring it here again. Now let's say you get another car, we have to declare it all over again, and we're going to have to make a new drive method all over again, because this drive method has gallons of gas, odometer, miles per gallon, which are declared up here, not the new ones that we've just redeclared. So we see why writing a, a sequence of lines one at a time is handy when you're starting a program. As soon as you start to look at things like doing something multiple times or uh, having multiple units of a concept like a car, this starts to become hard to manage. And that's where we need to take a look at object-oriented design. Let's, we'll pick that up in, an, in another video. Meanwhile, I hope this video was helpful. And as always, I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.